Can we be friends with our Lorentz object? This is a question that comes up frequently. When we realize that Lorentz is going nowhere and that we need to separate, that we really need to go no contact because that seems to be the best way to break the addiction, a common question is, but can't I be friends with my Lorentz object? Can't we stay in contact with each other? You know, we can just be friends. We can meet for coffee or for lunch or something like that. Well, the reality is that just doesn't work. If we think of limerence like an addiction, it's a bit like saying to an alcoholic that yes, it's okay, you can still go and have a drink occasionally, you'll be right. And as we all know with addictions, it just doesn't work that way. You can't still keep putting your hand into the candy jar to have some candy still. It, same with limerence. The reality is each time that we see our limerent object or each time we have contact with them, we're going to get a hit. It's that hit of dopamine. It's the same neurochemical that's released when we snort cocaine. We get that high and we feel great for a while. We feel all of the euphoria. We're walking on clouds and everything's fantastic. And then every time without fail comes the slump, the roller coaster that we talk about. We go through that slump of withdrawal because our addiction, our fix has been taken away. And as hard as it is, the best way to break this addictive cycle is no contact. It means literally that. We have to stop all forms of contact on social media, with Facebook, with Instagram. We have to remove their emails. We have to block their, their phones. It's the only way that we can break the addiction. And yes, I know it's tough. We have to go through that withdrawal, that pain, the emotional, the psychological withdrawal. And quite often, Invariably, we go through a grieving, a grief reaction. And it follows the same symptoms, the same process, the same trajectory of any grief process that uh, was first described by Kubler-Ross of, of denial, of anger, of guilt, of bargaining, and then eventually with time acceptance. You know, and that process can take a while. It could take months. In some cases, it might even take a a couple of years or so. That grief is not just grieving for the loss of the relationship, it's grieving for many things more. It's grieving for all the, all the traumas that we had in our childhood. Maybe it's even grieving for the transgenerational trauma that our parents never grieved themselves. I know with my own story, that's very much the case. My father never really dealt with, or for sure, no, not never really, but never has dealt with his own trauma from his wartime experience as a Holocaust survivor. That experience got passed on to myself, my sisters, and it was then up to us if we so felt to then do the work to grieve the losses that he experienced. So that's why my belief is we can't be friends with our limerent object. Maybe in five, 10, 20 years, maybe for some of us, we're always gonna be sensitive to that particular person and we can't be friends. But certainly for the foreseeable future, I think we have to get into the mindset, we have to get into our heads that friendship is off the table. No contact means no contact. Mm -hmm.